lady of smooth jazz tearing things up over here and the Irvin John Travolta tearing <laughs> things down. I'm in good company. And, and I'm here with, with not, uh, uh, Motown. Hey. Yeah, hey. Motown Maurice. Watch your mouth. Yeah, I, I, I got you. I can't. <laughs> that band is cold, Give it up man. for the Wild Band. Wild Band. They kept you wide awake. Now, you know, we are in Florida, and you do know that that's not grammatically correct, right? Did you take the F-cat, dog? <laughs> <laughs> wide awake, have you ever heard? Wide awake. They keep you wide awake at all times. Some bad boys. Hey, they, when you're that they. good, you don't got to be cruel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, they're awesome. They hey, are awesome. Hey, hey, I'm really happy to have you here. Thank I'm really you. happy to have you, you here at the Motown Maurice Show. Yes, sir. This is an experience like no other. Yeah, I ain't never had no experience like this before. That's the <laughs> That's for sure. You know, you know, yeah. you know, it's an experience that I will hope leads you to a, a job opportunity. Because we all know that we do have some problems finding a job at times. All right. All right. You know, the, the Mike oh. Tom Marie show is all about creating jobs. And, uh -huh. I, and, I, and, I, and I said, you know what? If I'm going to create a job, uh -huh. I'm going to look out for a brother you know, that I, needs a job. Yeah, I certainly appreciate it. When I find one that needs one, I certainly let him know he need to come see Brother Mo. <laughs> 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 no, no, but all jokes aside, uh -huh. you know, I got serious reason to believe that the character you played as Tommy uh -huh. on the show Martin, who couldn't, who never had a job, or no one ever knew his job, uh -huh. had some, some real identity, it had a, an identity with you. Like, your personal identity was that person. What the hell did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> did you understand that? what I'm trying to say? Okay, I'm telling you! For the public school system! Right now, and going back to California. Lord, what I'm trying to say, that was easy for you to say. What I'm trying to say is that you wasn't really acting. Oh. You brought that character, you brought your personal experiences onto that character. Is why? that true or not? Why didn't you say that the first time? <laughs> why did we have to go uh, for the last 15 minutes? My goodness. Well, we had a lot of things in common. Okay. I'm 6'4. Okay. The character Tommy's 6'4. Six 6'4, four. Six four, okay. <laughs> I'm about 270. He about 270. Okay. Um, his name is Tommy and my name is Tommy. Okay. But I got a damn job, and don't you say it no more, okay? <laughs> we all have a job. I must be about my father's business. That's my job. I must work the work of him who has sent me. Why does every Baptist preacher have to have asthma? <laughs> You have to have a breathing disorder to be a Baptist. Where, where Reverend William? Where, Reverend William, why y'all gotta have uh, asthma problems to be a preacher? Is that a prerequisite? <laughs> 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 oh man, oh man. But on the real, you were telling me in conversation uh -huh. when, when Martin decided that you wouldn't have a job, that you had a real problem with that. You know what? Martin and I were very good friends before the Martin Show. Um, and our relationship was very similar to our relationship on screen. I was a, you know, a calm cat. He was a wild cat, you know, we'd go play ball every day, and they were like, man, you better, Martin was a golden little boxer. Wow. So even though he's a little cat, he doesn't back down from anybody at any time. Mm -hmm. So cats like, Tommy, you better get your boy. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't back down from anybody. So I'm like, come on, man, let's calm down. We're going to be all right. That's really the way we, we brought that relationship to screen. So the first, ep the first year of the Mark show, we, um, when we first started the show, we sat around the room, and we decided, listen, we have to decide what our, what our jobs are going to be, because we know we're out there for young African-Americans and we want to make sure that we, you know, we do some things. We identify our jobs and we did about four or five episodes the first season of, of the Martin Show and revealing Tommy's job. So after you finish a season, we may finish maybe in May and we're off until maybe August or September. So we go back and we start every show with a table read. And that means you sit around with a script and you read the script. If you have any questions or concerns, you tell the writers about it. And we're reading the script and they're talking about Tommy's job. And Martin stopped and said, wait a minute. What the hell do you do, Tommy? <laughs> I said, well, I, I actually, he said, no, 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 you ain't got no damn job. I said, no, no, I do. Now, everybody around the table is cracking up, and I'm going, no, no, that's not funny, dude. I really do have a job, man. We, we, no, no. Now, right, it's like, I love it. Let's keep it. I'm like, no, no, don't do that. Don't do that, okay? So you were really resisting. My dad was an MP in the Navy, and that's how he ran the house. Every morning, I don't care if it's a weekend, he had a saying that nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream, get off your butt and do something. Mm. So that's the way we were raised. Work, 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 work. You don't work, you don't eat. So that's all, faith without works is what? You better, hey! 
So all my life I heard about how important it was to work, how important it was to do, how important it was to apply yourself. And now all of a sudden I felt like I was stripped. Man, you telling me that I can't work? Wow. You telling me I'm on some lazy bum with no purpose? So I, I had a lot of resistance to it, but it worked. And I was getting a big check, so I can say what the hell it is. Let's say praise the Lord. But not only has it worked, it's became a brand for you and a message Absolutely. that you, you preach when you go out to speak Absolutely. to kids. And I, uh huh. I spent a great deal of time with young people. I have a nonprofit for youth called Be Still and Know Incorporated. To be, B E, means to have a place, a position, and a purpose. Still, S T I L L, not S T E A L. <laughs> Means to be free of commotion, agitation, and confusion, and means to bring things together and to know is to be introduced to the truth. The truth is our children are beautiful, they're powerful, they're valuable, they're wonderful and worthwhile, and they need to know that. So that's part of the, <laughs> the, part of the, the mission. So I tour all over the country. Every weekend I'm in a different city empowering young people, both here and the Caribbean islands and stuff. So, In fact, last night I was supposed to fly out to Haiti, and I got a call to go out and um, give a bunch of my books and stuff and read to the kids. But I told them, listen here! I know that there's some, you know, things going on over there, and I would love to help, but I have to go to the, um, do the Maurice, that, uh, watch I your mean, mouth. the uh, the Motown Maurice show, and they said, <laughs> the who show? I said, the Motown Maurice show. They said, oh, the who show? <laughs> In Tampa, man, the Ma So here I am. Okay. Yeah. With you. Yeah. So, but I'll, I'll go back and visit them, but I spent a lot of time, you know, touring around, and, and inspiring our young people. I think it's so important that, that my, my job is more than just getting in front of a camera acting a fool. Mm -hmm. That we can't just get what we can, can what we get, then sit on our can. Hello, walls! Hello. That God blesses us so that we can bless others. So I spent yeah. a lot of time motivating young people, writing children's books, a literacy program, and, and empowering young folk. Okay, we're gonna talk about these books in, in, in just a second. But you know, as you're preaching, <laughs> to me, it kind of... I'm preaching. You're preaching. How do you hear without a preacher? Somebody please get this brother a handkerchief. That's right. You're, you're <laughs> breaking the sweat. You're getting hot in here. <laughs> but it kind of it helps me understand why you are referenced as the Pope of Comedy. Is that where it comes from? I'm the Pope of Comedy, dog! <laughs> I'm a church boy. I grew up in church all my life. And that... You went to my church? There's one... Sounds like one person in here went to church or something. <laughs> and that's a key ingredient to success to me, is a healthy spiritual life. And so that's very, very, very important. What was your question again? <laughs> You're the Pope of Comedy. Yeah, the Pope of Comedy. <laughs> Where are we going with this? Hey. And um, so, but I have that reputation in industry as well. We did uh, over 125 episodes of Martin, and we never did one episode without me leading a prayer for all of us, thanking God for the opportunity to, um, to empower lives. So having that relationship and folk being known in the industry is that they just, people think I'm a preacher, but I'm not a preacher. I just, church boy. You thought you was going to preach at one point well, in time in your yeah, life. Yeah, many are called, but few are chosen. If this talk show thing don't work out for me, I think I'm going to be a preacher. Oh, a lot of folk going to hell. <laughs> See, Lord. Lord don't call everybody to preach. Some preachers misunderstand the Lord. Lord told somebody, go pick a peach. And they misunderstood and thought he said, go out and preach. Some of y'all need to be peach picking. You got a little fuzz going on. <laughs> I crack me up. I Can I take it to the bridge? Hit me.